Hello, I'm Sober and I would like to talk about a recent paper, Taylor Driven Temporal Modeling for Swift Future Frame Prediction, or in short, Taylor SwiftNet. Consider a decision making system like an autonomous car which is receiving the n context frames with blue borders. A pedestrian is appearing from behind a white vehicle, and the system must make a decision according to the given frames. If it can predict the future frames correctly, it can infer that it must hit the emergency brake. Otherwise, an accident could happen. This is an example about why frame prediction can be important and useful. Future frame prediction is a challenging task because first, the model must learn the complex motion of the objects. Second, the future is uncertain and it makes the prediction even harder. Regardless of the difficulties in the nature of the problem, common recurrent architectures suffer from error propagation issue. It means that small error in the pr prediction can propagate through time and becomes greater. In other words, the prediction hyperplane deviates from the target more and more by the time. To address the complex motion learning task, several approaches have been proposed over the last years and in particular recurrent neural networks have been popular. The RNN and autoregressive approaches learn the motions implicitly and model motion in a discrete time space. This approach is limited to a fixed sampling rate and it has to sequentially go through all frames until the desired point in the future is reached. This increases not only the inference time, but it can also result in an error accumulation. A new line of work appeared that use PDEs to predict video frames. The PDE models can capture dynamics of the data in the continuous time space. They can provide a more precise model of the motion which is independent of the sampling rate. This means that the future frame can be directly computed from any point in time. However, the PDE-based approaches usually discretize the PDEs using forward Euler method, which can cause some artifacts. The forward Euler can be derived from finite distance difference formula from the derivative. According to this formula, we can predict the future frame at time t plus delta t using the first order derivative over time and given t. Delta t is the step size. It is important to mention that approximation error is proportional to the square of the step size. Our model, similar to the PD approaches, modeling motion in continuous time space. However, the main idea is to approximate the solution of a partial derivative equation by the Taylor series. Our model is able to learn high order terms of the Taylor series. The temporal resolution for forecasting can be freely adjusted independently of the temporal resolution of the observation and the desired future frame can be swiftly and directly predicted in just one forward pass. The condition time can be any real positive value and there is no need for a fixed step size. This is also important that Taylor expansion can preserve the continuous representation. Given a sequence of observed frames until time t, the encoder maps them into a latent space. The model infers a continuous function which can be evaluated for any positive value tau in order to forecast future frames at t plus tau. This process can be done in parallel because each feed forward inference can be computed separately. Difference of Taylor expansion and forward Euler. It is clear to see the discrete forward Euler and continuous Taylor series predictions in the figure. Here you can see the main Taylor Swift net architecture. 
the network first encodes the input video frames and returns embedding HT. We have used a modified version of 3D ResNet for the encoder. The temporal model models the future temporal dynamics and forecasts the frame at the future temporal step t plus tau in the embedded space called h t plus tau. We are estimating the high order Taylor terms recursively. To compute each Taylor term, a convolutional block called delta convolutional block, or in short, DCB, is proposed. Each DC block contains first two convolutional layers using 3x3x3 three by three by three kernel size, following by a leaky ReLU which keeps the temporal and spatial dimensions. The output feature map is then fed to the final convolutional layer to output the estimated derivative and the next DC block to estimate the next order derivative. While in our experiments the different DC blocks do not share their weights, we also evaluate a recurrent version with shared weights called RDCB. The decoder is a convolutional neural network that consists of six convolutional layers. It decodes the embedding and predicts the future frame at time t plus tau. We compare our Taylor Swift net with various state-of-the-art methods. As you can see in the table, we evaluated our method on four datasets from very different domains and we can and we were able to outperform on all of them. We use mean square error, mean absolute error and a structural similarity as our main metrics. We average the metrics over all frames of the predicted output sequence. Here you can see some qualitative results on our datasets. The left GIF is displaying the target and the right one is for the model prediction. Comparing different orders of the Taylor series. The figure can clearly show the effect of increasing gamma and by moving toward the time axis, the effect intensifies. For long-term forecasting, we use the same setup as in the previous experiments for moving in this dataset. The reason for such a fast drop in accuracy is due to the error propagation through the recursive steps. Longer step size needs less autoregressive steps, while shorter step size needs more autoregressive steps. It is worth mentioning that our model is not trained on autoregressive setup in this experiment and only we use the autoregressive mode for evaluation. Here you can see the effect of a step size. We are comparing the step size 10 with step size 2. Shorter step size is more vulnerable to long-term forecasting. the four scene frames, 24 on-scene frames set up for human data set. As we mentioned before, our approach is able to predict future frames with a higher sampling rate. Therefore, we can generate a slow motion version of the normal prediction. To demonstrate that our accuracy is due to the proposed architecture and not due to the encoder and decoder, we compared it with two variants with the same encoder and decoder. Here you can see the architecture of them. The expand approach expands the conditionally inserted tau and concatenates it to the temporally squeezed hidden embedding. Flattened version flattens the given hidden embedding using three convolutional layers 
and upsamples it using three con transpose layers. In addition, we evaluated Taylor Swift net using the numerical derivatives instead of DC blocks. Table shows that our approach gets the best results in compar comparison to all baseline models and numerical derivative approach. As mentioned before, the DC block can also be implemented as recurrent DCBs. In contrast to DC blocks, RDCBs share their weights. As shown in the table, DC, DCBs perform slightly better. We also found DC blocks more stable during training.